Hello everyone, welcome back to more Pokemon Red version. Last time we did some stuff in Celadon City, completed Celadon City, took down Team Rocket in, the, in their base underneath the game corner of all places, and we got a few items. We got our fourth badge as well. Get a good luck. We have four badges in our possession and four we have yet to obtain. In the process of doing all of this, we obtained the Sylph Scope after defeating Giovanni. And in a prior visit to Saffron, we obtained the Psychic TM from an NPC. And so, first thing I want to do is I want to go over the team, give a kind of a halftime report. We obtained HM2 Fly, so Ken now has the ability to fly us around. His moves are Gust, Fly, Quick Attack, and Whirlwind. He is level 29. Emil is level 29. And his moves are Tackle, Bite, Bubble, and Water Gun. Remy is level 30. His moves are Tackle, Thunderbolt, Quick Attack, and Hyper Fang. And is almost to level 31. Geller is level 30. Teleport, Confusion, Psybeam, Flash. With having Fly, we no longer need Teleport, so I'll be getting rid of Teleport next time I get a reasonable opportunity. And of course, we still have our cut user, Mushroom, the level 8 Paris. So, with all of that out of the way, I would like to actually do a few miscellaneous tasks before we, you know, before we get too far ahead. So, first thing to do is I would like to fly back to Pewter City. What I'm about to show off, you could have actually done after Vermilion, or, you know, after the SSN, but before the gym. But that task is really an optional thing. But after getting the cut HM, go back to Pewter City, Go back to the museum, and instead of going in the front door, you go. You want to get to that door by way of coming around here and cutting this tree down. So we'll have Mushroom take care of that. Come down, come around, and you want to talk to this guy. I think that this chunk of amber contains Pokemon DNA. It would be great if Pokemon could be resurrected from it. But my colleagues just ignore me. So I have a favor to ask. Take this to a Pokemon lab and get it examined. Old Amber. This is the third kind of Pokemon fossil you can get in this generation. Upon revival, it'll become the rock flying type Pokemon Aerodactyl. That thing is a physical attacker like very few other Pokemon. You want a physical sweeper, Aerodactyl is one of the better ones you can get. However, reviving Pokemon from fossils is still not something we can do. I mentioned, I believe I mentioned this when I went over the Dome and Helix fossils. Kabuto from the Dome fossil and Ammonite from the Helix fossil. So yeah. One thing that sets Aerodactyl apart from the other two though, aside from its type, Aerodactyl doesn't evolve into anything. It doesn't really need to. Of course, Gen 3 has pressure as an ability. And of course, Mega, as of X and Y, Mega Aerodactyl. Anyway, we have Old Amber in our possession. 
one thing I will go ahead and mention with the fossils, all three of them, upon being revived, they're level 30 in this generation. Besides that, Ammonite and Kabuto evolve at level 40. So, not too far away. Aerodactyl, yeah, he's, uh, he's a good Pokemon. We'll actually be getting to see a little bit of it later on. People who play this game know what's up. So you talk to these guys. You can't sneak in the back way. No, oh, whatever. Do what you want. Do you know what Amber is? Say yes. There's a lab somewhere trying to resurrect ancient Pokemon from Amber. Yeah, we'll get to it quite a bit later, actually. We are proud of two fossils of very rare prehistoric Pokemon. So with that being said, we're done here in Pewter. So, next, I actually want to, yeah, this guy, this guy here is referring to Pokemon you get in trades. Yeah, if you don't have enough gym badges, traded Pokemon don't obey you. like to talk about some in-game trades. We've seen a few of these. The first, you know, the, there was the in-game trade about Nidoran male for Nidoran female, and then Nidorina for Nidorino. Sim two similar trades. The whole point, really, is just if you have one but you want the other, you don't want to go through the hassle of having to and really, in one version, the male is more common, but in the other version, the female is more common. Of course, with the Celadon Game Corner, getting the Needle Reno from there, yeah. <laughs> the other in-game trade that, we, that I actually was able to show off was the guy who wanted an Abra in exchange for Mr. Mime. Now about that, I personally, I didn't, didn't really give any recommendation for Mr. Mime. Eh, some like him, but if anything, getting an Abra from the game corner does make that trade a little easier to manage, especially when you consider it's the only Mr. Mime in the game. The next, in terms of one per game, is this old man here. Hello there, do you want to trade your Poliwhirl for Jinx? Now, Poliwhirl is a water Pokemon that you can get by fishing, but since we only have the old rod, we can't get it yet. So, this one's out of our reach. But Jinx, actually, believe it or not, Ice Psychic, Whereas, in this generation, Mr. Mime was only a psychic type. Mr. Mime, if anything, it's okay as a special attacker, but there's better options still. Jinx is admittedly one of those options. It be with it being Ice Psychic, it has a few more weaknesses than Mr. Mime would, but... It's still a pretty nice Pokemon, especially in terms of special attacking. Gives it two different types to take advantage of. Another thing with Jinx, more so in games after this one, you know, after, like, Gen 2 onward. One thing with Jinx is it's known for using status affliction moves, like Sweet Kiss, Lovely Kiss, Attract, all that stuff. <laughs> all those moves. So... Jinx is actually 
kind of nice. It, it could be kind of a support Pokemon in that regard. So anyway, another in-game trade. This is one I haven't actually shown off, but it's an NP. There's a little girl, and she will ask for a Spearow, basically the counterpart to Pidgey. Normal flying evolves into Spearow, still normal flying. It's kind of a glass cannon compared to Pidgey and its evolutions. It's you know, Pidgey is a good attacker. Its evolved forms are okay, but some consider Spiro to be better than a little better than Pidgey because it's able to have to dish out a little more damage than Pidgey and its evolved forms can. Anyway, this girl who wants a Spiro, the Pokemon she gives you in return, Farfetch'd, normal flying, considered to be one of the worst ever made. It has. Less than average stats in everything. Awful move pull. Some see it as a HM slave, if anything. Oh uh, yeah, Farfetch'd is only there to fill the Pokedex. It's that. One, it's another one of those only one in the game. So yeah, Farfetch'd. Get it for the Pokedex. Nothing more. It, a common quote is, if you have a Spearow, use it. <laughs> Don't make that trade unless you're just doing it to fill in your Pokedex. Now that, that, now that all of that's been addressed, I am going back to Saffron City. They all use 
fighting types. So, I shall go ahead. I actually want to make sure I got my team. Yeah. Okay. I don't need to switch anybody around. So, yeah, I will go ahead and do these fights, and I'll see you in a bit. Is it's 
a kicker. It's a kicking Pokemon. Let's see here, rolling kick. My face, or rather my War Turtle's face. I don't like that. But yeah. A second Meditate. That's plus two attack. Double kick, yeah. Meditate to increase his offense, rolling kick, and double kick. Hitmonlee is actually based off of Bruce Lee, a famous martial artist and actor, actually. Bruce Lee... Here. Yeah, yeah Hitmonlee, as you saw there, used kicking moves, used Meditate to increase its own attack stat. Yeah, and also Meditate, or Hitmonlee is kind of a quick Pokemon, too. Wing attack. I'll take it. Believe it or not, I'm gonna get rid of Gust. Why? I stated already, Gust is normal in this generation, but becomes flying in Gen 2. Wing Attack has always been a flying move. So, not only is it, does it have a higher base power than Gust, it also gets... You know, it, it's... They both get the same type attack bonus, but Wing Attack is just a stronger move. Anyway, this guy's other Pokémon is Hitmonchan. This is... this Pokémon was inspired by... Just like with Hitmonlee... In terms of the English name, whereas Hitmonlee was based off of Bruce Lee, Hitmonchan is based off of Jackie Chan. However, as a Pokemon, you see by the sprite there, Hitmonchan is a puncher. It's based off of a boxer. So, yeah, you've, you've got a kicker and a puncher. And you, as you saw here, Comet Punch, Fire Punch. Hitmonchan is really great. As a Pokemon, anyway, you'll hit my lead, hit my chance. Main thing is. Hit my chin and hit my lead. They got better over time, just as hit my top for Gen 2 players. So, with the Black Belt defeated, you get not a lot of money. Indeed, I have lost. But I beseech you, do not take our emblem as your trophy. In return, I will give you a prized fighting Pokémon. Choose whichever one you like. This guy is so nice. He shows us the two Pokémon that we can actually choose. Our first option, Hitmonlee the Kicking Fiend, as the anime called him. This is the kicking Pokémon. And some like it because it's actually a bit more offensive than Hitmonchan in terms of attack stat. It's a little better than Hitmonchan. So we take a look at Hitmonchan. It's the punching Pokemon. Yeah, Hitmonchan is still good on as a physical attacker. But it's actually a bit more defensive, which is weird for a fighting type. But later generations would have defensive fighting Pokémon, such as Makuhita and Hariyama. So... One of the things comparing Hitmonchan to Hitmonlee... Hitmonchan is a good Pokémon, but after Diamond and Pearl, Gen 4 on, it becomes even better. Why is that? A lot of its moves, you know, some of its moves are the, like, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, etc. The Elemental Punches. Well, prior to Diamond and Pearl, Fire and Electric were both special types. So... Hitmonchan, garbage special attack, meaning Thunder Punch and Fire Punch, they... 
they weren't all that viable, but with Diamond and Pearl and the physical special split, those moves became quite a bit better because it gave, you know, Thunder Punch already gives Hitmonchan a weapon against flying types, but the fact that it was a physical me meant it did more damage. Anyway, same with, you know, Thunder Punch, or not Thunder, but Fire Punch, Mock Punch, things like that. Or Bullet Punch. Yeah, it's, it's still not a bad Pokemon. And another thing is Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, they're also they're decently they're speedy. So, for the sake of this playthrough, I'm going with Hitmonchan. Do I want to nickname it? Yes, I do. playthroughs, or just trading with someone. So anyway, with the Fighting Dojo done, I'm going to go back to the Poke Mart. We can... Oh, that's not the right way. I'm going to go back to the Poke Mart and go over, you know, once again, go over the items so we can get just because. Alright, so. Great balls. We've got some of them already. Hyper potions. We picked one up already. Don't need any. Because. Yeah. Great balls. One and a half times the catch rate of a Pokeball. So it's a little better than a regular ball. Hyper potion heals 200 HP. A bit excessive right now. Max Repel. This is the best Repel in the game. However, in the long run, it's not worth it. Why? For 700 Poké Dollars, you have a Repel that lasts for 250 steps. The Super Repel. 200 steps. You're paying a couple hundred extra Poké Dollars for only 50 more steps. Economically speaking, stick with Super Repels. Next items, Escape Rope. We've seen some of these. We have some of these. Full Heal. This will heal any status affliction. I will pick up five of them for now. Revives, we have some already. Revives a fainted Pokemon with half of its maximum health. Wondering with the Team Rocket members blocking one blocking the gym, the other gym and the other blocking Silph Co. What do we do? get to go to Pokemon Tower. I'm gonna go heal my team real quick, and I'm gonna shuffle my inventory as well. So I'll see you at the entrance of Pokemon Tower. All right, here we are back in front of Pokemon Tower. This is the grave site for Pokemon, as I said when we came here before. Now my inventory, I bought some more Super Repel, so I'm up to 25 of those. Got out my Self Scope because we do have to have it to get through Pokemon Tower. Besides that, I also put away all of my Pokeballs because we're not going to be catching anything. And I also put my bike away because I don't need it at the moment. Pokemon wise, our newest member of the team, Sensei, already level 30, which is not bad, actually. It's 
Even though the trainers were using mid to high 30s, compared to my high 20 to low 30, this level range is actually, is technically a little high for what I'm about to show off. So, first up, make sure your team is fully healed. With that, enter. talk to these NPCs, and obviously this is considered one of the creepiest, one of the creepiest areas in the Pokemon world. Pretty much any, any Pokemon gravesite is pretty creepy, but that's just how a graveyard is anyway, you know, real life graveyards. And yeah, the, just the sheer amount of fan fiction that originated from this one town. Just the town as a whole, and on a more focused level, this one building. Yeah, it shows how well it resonated. I mean, the creepypasta community. Lavender Town and Ben Round. Those were the first two that really took off, and it was, it was just, yeah, pretty much any grimdark story and Pokemon related. Chances are you're gonna it's either gonna be Lavender Town or one of the you know other aspects. Like, yeah. So that that's that. Now, before I go up those stairs, I just wanna go ahead and point something out to you guys. Now, I didn't actually sit, commentate anything. I talked to the NPCs. Just like a just also like real life graveyards, this area is actually really depressing, really sad, because like this girl here, for example, like I said, when we talked to the girl who gave us the Swift TM, yeah, just, like the idea of kids who are legally speaking too young to actually be a trainer, but still, they still have at least one Pokemon, but then that Pokemon dies for whatever reason. That's really, really sad. And but yeah, this this area, it resonates for a lot of people. In terms of the atmosphere, now some, now the main thing is, I already say graveyards are creepy anyway, you know, for a lot of people. One of the things that really does it is the music. I already heard a little bit of Lavender Town's overworld theme. Got to hear a little bit of this area's theme. They could have made it worse. I mean, some some people actually consider Fire Red and Leaf Green's soundtrack to you know, kind of ramped it up a little with having a better quality game, you know, better, a more powerful game. You have a better quality audio, a better quality music track. 32-bit compared to this, you know, 4, 8-bit, whatever. So many, you know, there are people that find the Fire Red Leaf Green versions of Lavender Town's Overworld theme and Pokemon Tower theme to be a little creepier, but hey, there are plenty of stuff that they could have added. They could have come, you know, plenty of, stuff, of music they could have come up with to make the really, excuse me, really ramp up the nightmare fuel for this area. I'll just kind of sit here, kind of let you use your imagination. Thank you. 
for something completely different. <laughs> Why are you here? Technically, we could have actually come here and taken care of this character already. I wanted to be different. Gary wants to know, what brings us here? You thought this guy was annoying before? This, this turns him into one of the most insensitive jerks alive. Your Pokemon don't look dead. I can at least think of fate. Yeah, there's a reason why this guy was, up, you know, kind of ranks up there for our most hated characters in the series. This guy is just rude. So anyway, we have a rival battle. Gary, notice he has five Pokemon with him. Hey, I have five Pokemon as well. Now, this fight, pay attention to his team. So his first Pokemon is a Kyoto, level 25. Now, with this Pokemon, obviously they level up over the course of the, of the game. And with this rival battle, actually, our first rival battle was back in Pallet Town. The second rival battle was supposed to have been the one I went to Route 9 for. But I advanced too far into the story, so I actually ended up locking myself out of that. To unlock that that rival fight, you would have had to have gone toward, toward Route 9, or not 9, but you know, basically to go down the left-hand path from Viridian City, as if you're going to the Pokemon League, without any badges. Go there before getting the pewter badge, and your, your rival will show up and challenge you to a battle with a, his starter level 9 and a Pidgeotto. Or, Pidgey, actually, Pidgey and his starter at level 9. That's it. That's just his team. And then, of course, the third rival fight was Cerulean City on the way toward Bill's house. And then we had the rival fight on the SS Anne. And now we have this as our fifth rival battle. So his next Pokemon is his Gyarados, which he did not have last time, actually. Ultimately, Gary's team of six, or whatever you decide to name him, he'll have a team of six Pokemon, and he will have his, a grass, fire, and a water. One of each. One will be his starter. And then he will have three other Pokemon, such as, like, that Pidgeotto. That being one of his other Pokemon. His next is his Growlithe. Now, since I went with Squirtle as my starter, he had Bulbasaur for his starter, so his Pokemon to cover for that. Magikarp as his water type, and Growlithe as his fire type. Of course, he was smart and evolved his Magikarp into Gyarados. I'm just going to switch into my Sensei. Agility is a move that raises the user's speed by one stage. Comet Punch. You tend to see this on Ledima and Ledian. A normal, it's a normal type move that can hit the target two to five times. It's admittedly a weak move, but it's something I guess. <laughs> Don't worry, they may, they get better fighting type attacks in later generations. So yeah, if you're if you're playing through like you're playing through the remakes, yeah. So that Growlithe, level 22 Growlithe, went down. Kadabra. This is another familiar face. This is one of his other. So let's go Kadabra v Kadabra. Level 20 hasn't changed at all. Still only knows teleport. And also, in the fight, in the, the fighting dojo, 
Got rid of teleport for recover. Recover restores up to half of the user's HP. I'm gonna use Psy Beam on you. It's not gonna do a lot of damage, but that's okay. Yeah, you teleport your little heart out. Aren't you just the cutest thing ever, Terry? You're so stupid. Confusion! Yes! <laughs> yeah, this Kadabra is just the worst. When he finally evolves it, it's a force to be reckoned with. His last Pokémon will be his starter, so for me, it's going to be Ivysaur. I will keep Geller in, and I will just destroy your level 25 Ivysaur with Psybeam. I repeat that my level range is a bit high for this area. So with that, we've defeated Gary. What? You stinker! I took it easy on you too. Um. Yeah, you took it easy by having a level 20 Kadabra that only knows how to teleport. Good job. Good job. Best game. Best game ever. 10 out of 10. Or best trainer ever. How's your Pokedex coming, pal? I just caught a Cubone. Cubone is a ground type Pokemon that we have a very, very small chance of finding in this area. 5% chance. Something to that effect. But only on the second to last floor at that. So one part of this building, very low encounter rate. The rest of the time, you're only going to find Ghastly. Ghost Poison becomes one of the best special sweepers in the game, especially Gen 3 on. Gaining Levitate, levitate for the ability Getting a Mega Evolution in Gen 6? Yeah. But it's a trade evolution. Cubone becomes the ground type Pokemon, Marowak. The thing with Cubone. Yeah, he caught a Cubone, but he can't find Marowak. So, there he goes again. So, yeah. So, yeah. That guy. Yeah, Ghastly and Cubone are the only two Pokemon you can actually find here. So, I'm actually going to go and heal my team. And then I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and go on through Pokemon Tower. Also... Along the way, you know, the, you've got a number of trainer fights, you've got a number of items, so... It's a, it was a good idea for me to make some room. But again, I put my Pokeballs away and got some more Super Repels because I don't, I to, I don't plan on catching anything in there. But if you want to get yourself a Ghastly or try and get a, a Cubone, go for it. So, I will see you guys in a, in a little while.
Okay, this NPC right here. Come, child, I seal the space with white magic. You can rest here. Enter purified protected zone. Da 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 da! That was kind of off. Oh well. seen Pokemon the origin. Be gone! Leave this place! Ghost appeared! Can I self scope? And fire red and leaf green. There was a fog over the area, so it added to the atmosphere, so I didn't like it. But anyway, we see that this ghost is Marowak. Level 30. This is none other than the spirit of the Marowak that the Team Rocket members killed. Fun fact, if you're playing red, blue, or yellow, and you have a game shark or whatever, use the catch all Pokemon, you know, you have the guaranteed Pokemon catch cheat, and you catch this Marowak, it will be a legit level 30 Marowak. Otherwise, no matter what kind of Pokeball you throw at it, it'll just pass right through. So this is just defeat Marowak. Ground type Pokemon, so don't try to use electric moves on it. <laughs> it's not hard. We get a little bit of experience. The ghost was the restless soul of a Cubone's mother. Mother soul was calmed. It departed to the afterlife. Yep. One of the one of the saddest parts of Pokemon lore is that scene right there. So here we are at the top floor of Pokemon Tower. We got some Team Rocket members. Here we go. What do you want? Why are you here? Back 
back to level 20s. Oh, it's I'll just go ahead and cut, leave them out. They're just regular trainer battles. And of course, as you saw, Remy leveled up, and yeah, pretty much we're all above 30 now. Yay! Another thing, before I get too far ahead, we got some items. We found an awakening, found an escape rope, found an elixir. This is the item that restores all power points to a to one move. HP up, we found some of them. Raises the Pokemon's base hit points. Nugget, found some of them. Sell it, 5,000 Poké Dollars is your reward. <laughs> X Accuracy, raises a Pokemon's accuracy for the duration of battle. Rare Candy, raises a Pokemon's level by one. We've got a few of them already, actually. So, that's our inventory. Nothing too fancy. I did go ahead and use my regular potions up, as you saw in you before fighting Marowak, because why not? Um... I can to switch these guys around. So, I'm just gonna switch- I'm gonna see you at the end of these re remaining trainer fights. I'll go ahead and skip through them. This old guy came and complained about us harming useless Pokemon. Sure. Yeah, sure. Pokemon are only good for making money. Stay out of our business. You're not saving anyone, kid. about this place, both of which apply to if you're playing Pokemon Yellow. If you're playing Pokemon Yellow, you have Pikachu following you for the duration of the game, and if you talk to Pikachu while you're in here, it'll be all scared and everything. Also, if you're playing Pokemon Yellow, mo some of your Team Rocket encounters are with Jesse and James, and their team consists of an Ekans, a Coughing, and a Meowth during your first few encounters. And I'm still poisoned. 
poisoned. Oh, lovely. It's not gonna last too much longer, though. Uh, yeah, Jesse, James, Meow. Yeah, because Yellow is actually based off the anime, which is cool. Anyway, this is Mr. Fuji. <laughs> you came to save me? Thank you, but I came here of my own free will. I came to calm the soul of Cubone's mother. I think Marowak's spirit has gone to the afterlife. Yeah, actually, to further the fact that it's, you know, the mother of Cubone. In Fire Red Leaf Green, it's obviously a female Marowak. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Anyway, I must thank you for your kind concern. Follow me to my home Pokemon house at the foot of this tower. <laughs> so here we are, back in Fuji's home. And we want to talk to him. And in exchange for... Going to Pokemon Tower, he's about to give us something. So he ensures that you know, we care for our Pokemon and everything. He tells us our Pokedex quest to fail if we don't care for our Pokemon or love them. So he gives us the Poke Flute. This item! Surprisingly, it had one appearance in the anime in Season 1. And it was featured in this part of the game. But aside from that, you know, it had kind of a return in, Heart in Gen 2 and the Gen 2 remakes. But was gone after that until Gen 6, X and Y. So, this item! Upon hearing a Poke Flute, sleeping Pokemon will spring awake. It works on all sleeping Pokemon. With that, we can now wake up Snorlax. And in doing so, we can now progress to Fuchsia City. But before we do any of that, I need to go heal my team. All right, with that, I, <clears throat> I organized my inventory a little. I healed my team. And one last, and uh, one of the items I put away was the silk skill because we no longer need it. So, yeah, the Poke Flute. You obviously want to keep that with you if you plan on getting at least one of the Snorlax captures. I'm going to at least hope to catch one of them just to have it in the Pokedex. Even if I'm not going for 100%, it's still a good Pokemon to have on hand, because Snorlax is a wall. One of the better walls, you know, one of the better defenders, but also good on offense. But anyway, the Poke Flute. Upon getting the Poke Flute, Awakenings are useless. Awakening is a consumable sleep restoration item. Poke Flute, infinite use. So I'm going to be using up my awakenings as needed. I only have three, but after getting the Poke Flute, you no longer need to buy awakenings. This would later you know, be replaced by the Blue Flute item in Gen 3 onward. So there you go. Very nice. So I think that's a, it'd be a good place to stop. We, Got through Pokemon Tower, so we are actually completely done with Lavender Town. So our next objective is actually to go back to Saffron and finish things up there. So we'll go ahead and fly, do that now. Fly back here. So first, Saffron City. Next, Fuchsia City. So we go around, we see Team Rocket's still here. But hey, this guy is not locking the door anymore. So, yeah, that means we can now go on. So, yeah, next time on Pokemon Red, we will be exploring the Silph Code building. 
see you guys then. <laughs>